Well, hello again, everyone. This is Chris Joslin welcoming you again to another edition of The Chris Joslin Show. It has been a bit of a hiatus since we've been here. There was a series we put together, uh, Jennifer and myself, on starting and running in uh, a transportation business, a small transportation business, and some of the pitfalls, some of the challenges that we all face when doing so. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. There's more of that to come. That's kind of the ilovelogistics.com learning center, if you will. I think that's going to be something that will resonate with a lot of folks. Hope it, do hope it does. Comments are always appreciated at the site. Again, at www.ilevellogistics.com, hopefully coming across your screen at this very moment. But we are back with a new guest today, a very special guest, Miss Hope White, coming to you from southern Georgia, almost, almost all the way to Savannah, actually. She is the founder of a HD um, drayage and container service down in uh, Metter, Georgia. I'm pronouncing that wrong, I'm sure, and she'll probably cor correct me later. But she also, very interestingly, started a, a company called Logistically Speaking Learning Center, which I want to dive into today and, and uh, converse with her a bit and see where that's led her in the business. And, and she has a wonderfully uh, adept in personality-driven podcast, and you'll see why in a moment, called No Bullshipping. I uh, love the play on words, and with transportation today, that is very common way of thinking about things, maybe with a little bit difference in words. So without further ado, let's welcome Miss Hope White. It is absolutely terrific to have you on board today to the Chris Joslin Show, Hope. And uh, uh, it's it's just fantastic to be talking to another segment of the transportation industry, getting their feel for what's going on right now, yeah. what's going on for the last two years, and where in the heck are we sure. going in the next few, right? Because it's, it's a challenge all the time, yeah. isn't it? But welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much, Chris, for having me. Um, it's really a pleasure to be able to sit and talk with you today. So I'm really excited. You hail from the southeast I hail, corner of this great I nation, do. right? I hail, I hail from yeah. South Georgia. Very good. A, a near to Savannah, if I if I am correct with my geography. Yeah. So I live in coastal Georgia, Statesboro area, which is near Savannah. But I'm actually from South Georgia, which is Thomasville near Tallahassee, Florida. Oh, very good. Yeah. So that's the best of all worlds. You got the ocean right there. You got the forest nearby. You've got all that beauty there. That's fantastic. But you do have some humidity from time to time. I know oh, that for sure. Yeah, we have nat days for sure. Uh, it gets very <laughs> hot days. and sticky here. <laughs> you know, uh, it's funny. I'd love for you to take a moment and, and talk about your history in the business. I, I, yeah. you know, looked on LinkedIn and I've, you know, I didn't get a chance to meet you until today, yeah. though some of my team has. And but it, it seems like you have some really good things going on in terms of your drayage and your container service. And, and uh, yeah, I did see, though, that you kind of started out in transportation with THD, right? The Home Depot. Yeah, I did. So how did that process go? Yeah. So I started off in supply chain in uh, the warehouse inside, uh, actually direct fulfillment. Um, I did that for about five years and then transitioned out. Um, transitioned out into my own freight brokerage. I had another company. I actually still have that company, but we don't do any business on that side. Um, HD White Logistics. Um, we did that for about uh, four years and then realized that we needed to become asset based to be able to do the drayage side of the business. And that's how we're my now, do you for. focus? Do you focus your drayage? So, so it's you have an HD brokerage or it's still there, right? And then you have an asset side that yeah. is HD dray and container yeah. service. Yeah, correct? the brokerage side is no longer active. So, we just have the asset side now because that side actually dominated um, the rest, you know of the business, it didn't make sense to continue to have the broker side. Um, so we have the mm -hmm. asset side now, which is HD dredge and container services. Well, with your proximity to Savannah, I can't imagine that doing anything but growing, you know, yeah. that, because that port is really doing some. Yeah, things. we have, we have been very blessed and very fortunate to grow fairly quickly, very rapidly uh, due to our proximity to Savannah. Um, and also Charleston, don't leave Charleston out. Right. So, we're still in a good standard for Charleston right. as well. Um, and we've done very well. We're very, very fortunate um, 
of just being in place for that. That's fantastic. And I, you know, I'm, I'm located on, well, I live in Arizona now, but I'm primarily have most of my business on the West mm-hmm. coast. And so of course, every time we see the ports diminishing in some of their imports, et cetera, on the West coast, we know what's happening. It's going around yeah. through Panama and heading right to yeah. you and other ports along. Yeah. There, so. so it's, it's yeah. swinging back to you now um, because you guys yes. have yeah. dropped your rates to meet ours. So it'd be interesting to see um, this volume that we were so excited for, right. Um, now drop again and go back to you. So back to you, Chris. <laughs> Yes, exactly. Toss it back to me. You know, the funny thing is, though, the population centers in the United States, if you look at a a map, are, are, you know, you get west or excuse me, east of the Mississippi, actually kind of, you know, like an hour plane ride from Cincinnati Mm -hmm. is 80 percent of the country's population. Mm -hmm. So going around through the Panama Canal and some of the other things they're doing in Mexico as far as the the transportation from the west coast side to the east coast side on rail is going to continue to grow. Yeah. Now it might have slowed down growth wise, but I think you're I think you're going to be in for some years of growth there oh, in that area. Sure, really for do. sure. We're definitely seeing that development still here in Georgia. Uh, Georgia's still number one, I think, for the ninth year in a row for supply chain and logistics. Uh, we have seen an extreme boost, of course, for EV plants, electric vehicle plants um, that have chosen Georgia to be uh, some of their main hubs for some of their facilities. So we have quite a few of those plants here now. And as a result, those suppliers with those EV plants are also coming to Georgia as well to be able to support some of those electric vehicle plants. So Georgia is still in a very good standing for supply chain logistics. Of course, the the perfect segue question for me when you mention EV is mm-hmm. how soon in the future of, of your drainage company Will you get that very first one? Because oh, I know in California, it's like you have to, right? Yeah. Georgia, not so much, but yeah. it's going to be a while. Autonomous right? trucking and, and EV trucks. Yeah. So for us at HD Dredge, I mean, that's definitely on the horizon. The cost there. Oh, God, I can't mm. fathom that right now. So I'll probably say that's like a five year projection for us. Uh, just full transparency, just because of the cost there. Uh, One of the other things that we're noticing here in Georgia is that um, we don't actually have charging stations for those electric vehicle trucks yet in place. So to purchase a truck in the next year or so would probably be premature because we're not actually prepared to charge it unless you're going to put a station at your actual facility. Right, which is uh, very costly as well. Costly and it's pointless because your truck is just not going to sit on a charging station. It has to move, right? So... No, I, I hear yeah. you. And I've, I've dealt with a number of the EV companies out on the West Coast yeah. and there's a lot of dynamics about it. But, they, you know, California is like that. They they push these things, these these initiatives and mandates sure. kind of first. Yeah. And uh, the, the nice thing, though, in terms of what you're talking about is a lot of the plants that go up, mm-hmm. a lot of the, you know, uh, areas where there's labor available yeah. to, to put into these plants mm-hmm. is – the Carolinas, Georgia, yeah. et cetera. Yeah. So I, I think that's wonderful. Sure. Um, and, and it's going to grow. Yeah. You, you know, whether people like the idea of EV or not, it's coming at us It's anyway. coming. It's coming in hot. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Speaking of coming in hot, though, I, I you know, I, I wanted to transition. Your transportation stuff is very interesting to me. Okay. Local drage, et cetera. It sounds to me like you're predominantly port drage. Is that yeah, correct? Yeah, we are or predominantly port. some domestic as well. Yeah, we're, port, we're predominantly gotcha. port drage. We've done some real but for the most part, we're poor mm-hmm. Dre. The funny thing is, is that the more interesting part is I, I read up a little bit about mm-hmm. you and watched a few of the podcasts mm-hmm. and which, by the way, are tremendous personality driven. <laughs> You've got it. You got a home run. Oh, with that thank kind of you stuff. so really much. Do. I appreciate you. And, thank you. Yeah. And I wish I, I don't I'm not born with the same personality. I have to kind of flip a switch on to have any personality. That's why I married the wife I did because she's all the personality. But, uh, but anybody that starts your podcast the way you do like, good morning, it's Friday, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, I'm going to watch this. I'm going to watch this. And that's good stuff. Thank you so much. But the, the thing that interests me about that the most is that I think that transportation industry, it doesn't have enough of it. Yeah. It's, you know, number one, it's a great branding tool. Yeah. You know, you get your, your face and your attitude and everything out there on the, on LinkedIn and YouTube, et cetera, like that. It's, it's a fantastic thing to brand what you do for a living. And it's also a fantastic thing to, uh, create other pathways for 
making people understand that supply chain is very important. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and you know, the two things that jumped out at me that I'd love to hear from you about are your logistically speaking learning center. Sure. Okay. Which he has huge interest to me. <laughs> and uh, also the idea, well, it does. It, it, I'll tell you why after you chat about it a little bit, go ahead. I, I'm, I'm going to babble on for a while. So tell me about that. It's very interesting. All right. So I also have logistically speaking online, uh, which is a, a program designed to target C-suite executives that are looking to transition out of corporate into entrepreneurship when it comes to logistics and supply chain. So basically taking the skills that they have learned from corporates um, in their roles and responsibility, whether that is in the transportation side, uh, planning side, inventory management side, um, or maintenance, even on the maintenance side, and taking those skills and applying them to entrepreneurship. Um, What I found... Once I left big box retail and started my company was that the information and the knowledge and training that I had over on that side, on the corporate side, although very helpful, <laughs> although very fruitful, um, when it came to starting my own business, I needed to figure out the other way. Right. I needed to learn some business. Right. And some marketing and some rates and quoting on this side and strategy and planning just from an entrepreneurial side. So logistically speaking, provides mentorship and consultations to those executives that's looking to transition out and start their own either trucking company, freight brokerage, freight forwarding, uh, warehousing and distribution side of the business, we can assist with that. That is fantastic. Yeah. And I, honestly, you don't know until you get a few years in and you look back and you start analyzing things, but yeah. I, it is, so you got to kind of evolve into yeah. whatever you'll become in that manner. Yeah. But I think it's a great thing because there's, there's so many of us out there that have been doing, I, I hate to say it, 33 years oh, now wow. in transportation. <laughs> I, I hate to even say, well, you can tell by all the gray in my yeah. beard, right? So, wow. But uh, it, so a lot of us have this experience that we don't even realize the amount that we really know in one segment or another. Yeah. Taking those skills and and transferring them is very key into your business. Um, If you don't do that, then, you know, it's kind of like a waste, right? So um, Mm -hmm. we at Logistically Speaking aim to pull out of those skills um, and talents and get you to apply them in your business every day and also give you real life skills, uh, training and experience in the business. So that's what we do. Well, I, I saw one thing where you had a couple of busloads of people that like <laughs> Dang, a, it must Chris, be a port like, thing or Chris, something. Chris, you went all up in my Kool-Aid. Good God. Hey, hey, <laughs> I got to study up, man. I, I need to know. Sure. I need to know. Yes. So, so, uh, <laughs> well, I, I honestly hope my, my uh, daughter who you met, yeah. one of my daughters you met yeah. and my son-in-law, they said, they said, you've got to, you got to check this person yeah. out. You got to check yeah. it out online. So I'm please go ahead. Tell me, tell me a little. Yeah. Bit about so this. one of my, one of our mentorship, um, one of our mentorship uh, offerings is that we do a student day a year um, based off our, our enrollment. Um, and that particular uh, event that you've seen was our second annual student day held in Savannah, Georgia, where we took a group, two buses, provided to us by Georgia Southern University to the Savannah Port for a port tour. Um, we also did a warehouse tour um, of a counterpart of ours, Outsource Logistics, who allowed us to tour their warehouse space because they have a multitude of services um, and clientele that we wanted our students to see. Um, our students who came are actually active business owners or potential, you know, getting started, but most of them are currently in the business. And so we just spent a day down in Savannah um, getting that hands-on knowledge and experience. And if you're an owner of a trucking company, you send your guys in the ports and you've never been in the ports, it was an opportunity to get in there and see just what the day-to-day life is, day in the life of, you know, being in those ports. So it was a great time. A lot of questions got asked, uh, a lot of answers, <laughs> a lot of answers was, you know, yeah. given. So it was great. You know, what's amazing to me is that in, in this, it sounds like I, I thought maybe it was just students from the college that I no. that you were dealing with, but it sounds like more than that. It sounds like entrepreneurs and business people that, it, but even at that level, yeah, most people that are running a brokerage, for instance, day to day, 
have rarely or have ever even been inside a warehouse. Yeah. Or certainly a port yeah, at all. Yeah. They may be dealing with it and thinking trucks do this and trucks do that. There's more to it. There's a lot of nuance. To yeah. It. So I found value in having that hands-on experience early on in my uh, career as a freight broker getting started. Um, even though I had worked in the warehouse, right, um, I had a different perspective than being an entrepreneur at the warehouse, right? Seeing what my driver, what drivers would go through or what my dispatchers and admin would go through at the time, um, trying to get loads cut loose or drivers cut loose. It just was a little different, right? And so it's very mm-hmm. imperative through logistically speaking, we provide that experience that you understand what your business is facing, right? Um, and dealing with some of your customers. And then also it helps you have a great relationship with your customers because you have a better understanding than just doing the work and getting paid. You're building a relationship where you understand the day-to-day woes of what your customer might, you know, and your drivers might be going through yeah. as well. You know, it's it's funny. I've run into a lot of small a trucking business entrepreneurs that they started out as a driver. Yeah. And they, they're like, Hey, you know, I can do this yeah. and add another driver or two. Yeah. And they start down that road and which is great. Fantastic. They know how to get from A to B and mm-hmm. do their deliveries and pickups yeah. and all that kind of thing, but they're not business people. Yeah, not at all. And some of that needs to be connected together. I hundred yeah. percent agree with you. It's, yeah. it's actually, the reason I'm talking about it so much is something I truly believe in. Yeah. And I think giving back to the industry yeah. is, is part of yeah. it. And if you can do it, and profit from it? Why not? Yeah. I mean, that's that's what we're all in business to do as well. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, and so I'm I admire that a lot. I think it's a, a great thing to do. And again, I think five years from now, if you keep pinging away on that, I know it's hard because you're also running another business, <laughs> right? That. I know how that can be. It's hard. You're right because yeah, so. it pulls a lot for me. Um, up until about three four months ago, I was the only instructor in logistically speaking. So Ugh. now we've added. Uh, four more uh, instructors, and um, we are trying to um, build out, you know, more instructors. So it's just not just all on me. So, yes, it has been very difficult Mm -hmm. um, trying to manage both um, the training side and the trucking side of the business. Yeah. Yeah. But again, uh, kudos to you. And, you know, at the end of this, you can give where everybody can get a hold of you, et cetera, because I think that's vitally important. And matter of fact, I'll probably put a link on, I've, I've got a, an aggregating curating website that we put these podcasts on and we send out emails daily called yeah. I love logistics.com. Yeah. And, and I think we'll put a little note in there to, for people to click on, to go to your site too, if, if you'd like, that's, oh, yeah, that's cross promotion is a wonderful thing. Oh yeah, sure. And, we, we appreciate and, that. Whatever yeah. that that's perfect. Yeah. And, and it, it's, it's also obvious to me that, that there's a, a lot going on in our industry long overdue by oh, the absolutely. Way, to, absolutely. to especially get, uh, you know, female and, um, different ethnicities involved in our industry right. to a higher level. Yeah. It, it's, I, I know you're you're connected to Sarah, which it, she's yeah. done a ton of things. Sarah's the best, and I, and I even <laughs> oh yeah, Sarah Sarah's great. Had a couple of short conversations with her, but she's she's so busy you can't pin her down anymore, yeah. really. Yeah. But uh, uh, but at least for yeah. me, for you, probably different. Yeah. But but uh, the the thing that I wanted to to touch base on, and I know you've had a conversation on your podcast with uh, Ellen uh, Ellen Voy. Uh, I always pronounce her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always pronounce her last name wrong. I want to say. Wow. No, Ellen Boyd, so, women in trucking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So I'm, I am very happy. My, my daughter runs one of my companies. Oh, wow. So I'm, yeah, and she's terrific, okay. terrific. But when we go to these conferences, she's also, you know, a considerable minority. Yeah, she is. And it's still, it's still dominating. what was the old saying I heard? Yeah. Male pale and stale. And I, I, you don't you know, want to hear my term, Nadja, Chris, so I ain't going to say it. <laughs> no, I do not. <laughs> you don't want to hear my term, bro, but your, your, yours is more politically correct. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. But it, it's long overdue in our industry yeah. that, that things are starting to, and at least I feel like they're starting to move in a direction sure. where there's, there's certainly more infiltration at a whole bunch of different levels, not just, yeah you know, customer service or something yeah. like that, but at the driver yeah. level and, and certainly at, you know, the C-suite level, the, you know, 
the head of the BNSF railroad yeah. now is, is female. So, so there's a lot of those very good things happening, but I wanted to get your take on that, what your perception is. Yeah. So uh, my perception is still very much the same, um, that the industry needs a refreshing change here um, and opportunities, bigger opportunities and larger opportunities extended to um, black and brown people in the industry. Um I think there needs to be um, a slow trend, a slow changing of the hands in that regards, uh, especially in some of these companies. We know back during the pandemic, there was a large high profile case that happened that, of course, opened the eyes of these corporate companies about, you know, where minorities were in their business from a supplier perspective or a um, internal you know, employee perspective. And so there was all this work done around adding uh, black and brown people into supplier diversity roles, uh, beefing up minorities in supplier roles. But um, it all seemed like it was a bunch of smoke and mirrors to appease the general public at that time, just given the climate, because now we're right back to pre-pandemic time, right? And so... Mm -hmm. Um, it's not just necessarily black and brown people needing those opportunities, but also just women in general, right? Um, mm -hmm. white, brown, Asian, whatever. We all women need mm -hmm. those opportunities in supply chain as well, and to be seen as a viable uh contender for CEO uh top executive roles in supply chain and management. So mm -hmm. I am very big on that. Um and mm -hmm. um I push that heavily. I'm with you on that. I, I you know, I'm, I'm always, you know, we talk uh, a lot with uh, friends and family about the, the term meritocracy, yeah. right? You know, who, who can do best at what? Right. Um, and, and that's always a part of the, the formula. Mm -hmm. But in, in an industry like this, that is tilted in so far in one direction, it needs to be kind of prodded and pushed in another. Sure. And I'm, you know, I, I'm not the right spokesperson no, for that, obviously. It's going to take, but, it's gonna uh, take a lot of the, us, right? But it's good you're yes, open to having that conversation. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And and from the the point where I started my career, you know, last century mm -hmm. <laughs> to, to oh my now, God, not last century. I have seen, yeah, exactly. I have seen a lot of change, but I've also seen how slowly it, it goes. Yeah. Uh, so, so one of the things I think about what we're doing today and what I see yourself and Sarah and Blythe Brumfield, those, those type of people do, Ellen, et cetera, mm -hmm. is they're highlighting, and it, it doesn't even have to be a direct conversation about this very subject. Every time someone like that gets on a podcast or on a panel or whatever the case may right. be, they are turning up the volume of the potential that is there sure. that's not being sure. used. So I, I, I think that's something that I wanted to highlight today right. and, and mention because uh, it's in, and I have a family member that's in, in one of those categories right. that could run circles around most of the people I know right. that have been doing this for a lot of right. years, but yeah. kind of doesn't get the opportunity no. to do it. No. And it's not just necessarily in supply chain and logistics, but it's in the financing sector as well, banking sector. Um, it's just kind of across the board. Those opportunities need to be extended. Yeah. Well, thank you for that input. I, so I'm going to, I'm going to try to, you know, finish up with one thing. I always try to ask everybody, you know, used to be in this industry that I was pretty good at forecasting kind of what's around the corner, uh -huh. but the last couple of years has been so crazy yeah. and volatile and messy. And yeah. It's, it's like, it's a big cloud yeah, sure. to me, and, but I'm also on the other side of the country in a different kind of, I'm primarily on the domestic intermodal side mm -hmm. with, with equipment provision and brokerage and IMC world. Right. You're in a different category than that. And sure. So what do you see? What, what are, I mean, you can predict your own stuff and it sounds like it's going like this up, up and away, which is great. I'm that's very happy for that. But what do you see in the industry from your point of view? So it felt like that 90 days ago that we could be able to predict where we were going to be going 90 days ago. Um, the last um, 60 days, I'm going to say since maybe the second week of August, have been extremely, extremely unnerving um, because mm -hmm. they took a rapid decline with no warning 
from our customers. Hmm. Uh, we have been pushing for capacity projections um, or capacity requests, uh, projected capacity, projected needs, projected numbers, however you want to put it, projections, right? We have mm-hmm. just been pushing and pushing and pushing. And oftentimes we don't get a response at all from our customers. Like they just leave us hanging, right? Or they'll give us a very low ball number. And then we plan, oh, we're going to put the trucks here or we're going to do the operation like this. We're going to scale back that. And then out of the blue, oh, guess what? We have an 80 percent increase. Right. Um, And so that has been going on now for about 60 days. So what that does is it cripples us and it 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 limits us being able to project our revenue for the next. I can't project right now, probably for the next 30 days realistically. Yeah, see, you make a really good point there because yeah. you used to be able to project at least a half a at year at a time. At least six months. Now it sounds like you got to do it like 30 days, two months at a time or 30, 30 days. days even, it's no yeah. longer two months. It's 30 days. Um, And just because everything is changing so drastically, so quickly, there's so many different factors affecting the industry um, that it's crazy. So um, it's getting really, really, really um, frustrating because it's creating a lot of different issues with communication with my team, as well as with my drivers, because it almost makes me look like I have egg on my face if I say, oh, guess what? We got this and we're going to start this. And then award time comes, start time comes. And then the client just out the blue says, oh, guess what? We pushed that back to January of 2024. Everybody is in doubt right now about recovery and timing. I've heard a million different speculative things on when things are going to turn. And I, I, you know, it's, it's almost like you have to circle the wagons as they say, and, and look at your baseline and just focus, focus, focus on that. Try to keep your drivers operable Mm -hmm. and kind of team up and just get through it. I mean, that's, that's what it feels like to me. Yeah. So I had a conversation with some of my admin and my guidance in the background here. And our plan is to go low and slow. Um, we have already furloughed. Um, we are going to scale drivers back. Um, we have to do whatever it takes for us to survive as well, because you can't you just can't. We just can't keep going where we are with no not being able to plan or project. Right. Um, and so that's what right. we're doing as well. I won't even attempt to take a stab at where I think or when I think that this is going to clear up. Because every day it seems like there is something new in the world going on that affects our ability to recover from where we're at now. So I will just remain silent. And, <laughs> <laughs> and I'll I think that's the, yeah, <laughs> I, I can't say I disagree with sure. you. Um, and it, it, it seems like it, you know, even setting the pandemic part of this aside, just the volatility. Yeah. And it seems like if there's something that happens on another continent, yes. it spills over to what is going so on. So absolutely. That's know? what I'm referring to. Things of the world mm-hmm. that are in, mm-hmm. you know, affecting us domestically here in the United States. Um, and mm-hmm. it's going to be, it's going to be a while. Um, it's going to be a while. And that kind of, you know, it kind of puts a, an exclamation point on one of the things you said earlier. Mm-hmm. It's, it's understanding as an entrepreneur, you know, a smaller mid cap business owner, yeah. the important blocking and tackling elements, because sure. if you don't have those in place, yes. the volatility will wipe will you out. Wipe you out quickly. Um, mm-hmm. We've just been very fortunate at AC Dredge to maintain as long as we have to this point um, where we are now mm-hmm. in the, in the business, because quite a few of my counterparts and competitors were wiped out October of last year. Um, so it hit them fairly quickly. Right. So whereas they were ramping down, we were ramping up at the first of the year. And I've told quite a few friends and just sharing, like going back, looking at my numbers and our, and our numbers at the first of the year, I probably should have scaled back then to be in kind of like a hibernation mode, probably mid spring Mm -hmm. area in preparation for this. But, um, just from what we were getting from our customers at the time, we were going to be okay. And that's right. not what right. has happened. Well, I, you know, what I can tell you from my history is that things do cycle. Yeah. 
And I think go go low and slow might be the appropriate way to yeah, handle this right thing now. Yeah, put this thing in a crock pot. <laughs> <laughs> it Ooh, I like it. I like it. Gosh, I'm yeah. you know I'm I get to use that. I'll give you credit for it once, and then you I'm gonna put it. Oh, you gonna take like, what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> put this thing in a crock pot, baby. Put it all in there and just let it go low and slow, baby. Low and slow. Boy, and you know what? What happens after stuff finally comes out of the crock pot? Ooh, it's so oh, tender and good. good. Oh. It yeah. is. <laughs> I'm with you. Oh, you know what? I didn't realize how hungry I was right now. So. Yeah. But, uh, well, so it, Hope, I, I can't thank you enough You're for coming welcome. on for a few minutes and, and chatting with me about these different things. Yeah. I, 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 I think it's real important to get voices yeah. and faces out sure. there and to continue to, to you know, brand sure. and grow and make people understand what's going sure. on. Where can people find you? Where can they get in touch? So with? you can find me on LinkedIn. Um, I believe I'm Hope Allen or Hope White on LinkedIn. Don't don't get me, Chris. I think it's both. Okay. I think it's All right. Both, that, I'm yeah. that on LinkedIn. Um, yeah. And also you can find me on Instagram at HD Dredge um, or Logistically Speaking Online. And our website is, is uh, www.hddredge.com. That is perfect. We'll put that stuff in the show notes. And again, can't thank you enough. Thank you, I, I hope to stay in touch awesome. and collaborate sure. on anything that you want. Sure. And that, that works out perfectly. Well, again, I can't thank Hope White enough for joining us today for a few minutes to talk about her company her companies, I should say, some of the things that are going on in the transportation industry from her personal point of view, where it's going, how the, the diversity in the industry is starting to grow, and how all of us can apply a better understanding of the transportation logistics supply chain industry to our lives and to our possible careers, which in the future is going to be very broad in the supply chain industry. So thanks again. Um, you can find us, as always, on multiple platforms, Spotify, of course, YouTube, of course. We're found on LinkedIn. All the different places that you can visit us will be in the show notes below. And again, I, I can't thank you enough for joining us for this edition of The Chris Jocelyn Show. Mm -hmm.